Welcome back. I want to begin our lesson with the morning recovery prayer. Dear God, thank you for a day of healing yesterday. Help me to continue healing today. The title of today's lesson is Week 19 Partner's Survival Kit. Here's the things that we'll look at today. Identifying trauma triggers and then how to assemble your own partner's survival kit. First, I want to focus your attention on the subject of trauma. No one has to tell you that you've been traumatized by your partner's behavior. You hurt at a level that others who've not been through your experience cannot fully appreciate. Your partner in particular doesn't completely understand the depth of your pain. He may believe that you're just trying to get him back or accuse you of being a drama queen or believe that you're trying to just get sympathy. What he and others don't understand is that you don't want to stay wounded. You do not want to keep looking at things or looking for things that upset you and remind you about the wounds that he's inflicted on you. There are many things that continually remind you about your pain. We call these trauma triggers. Trauma triggers can be people, places, things, events, behaviors, <laughs> virtually any event or any circumstance can be a trauma trigger. The most insidious part of trauma triggers is that they seem to be lurking everywhere, just waiting for you to come along so that they can trigger your trauma. They have the impact of, of uh, just say, taking a stick and poking it into an open wound. Every time you encounter a trauma trigger, you're traumatized all over again. You find that your encounter with trauma triggers will bring to mind some of the traumatic events that you've been through and it may even bring up not just the recent traumas but some long past traumas. It's like the, the trauma that your partner caused hooks into every previous trauma in your life. If you suffered any kind of abuse in your life, then your partner's trauma connects back with those past traumas. If you were physically or sexually abused in the past, your present trauma that you're suffering through stirs those past traumas. So it's as though your partner is the one responsible for every past trauma. If you had an abusive parent, uh, the new hurt your partner has caused just reintroduces those past hurts into your life again. Past relationships with partners that were traumatic are also brought into the present by your partner's uh, actions as uh, they traumatize you and hook into those past traumas. I try to help sex addicts understand how uh, current traumas hook into the past and how the face on those past traumas uh, are actually his face. And I hear guys saying, you know, that's not fair. It's not fair for me to be blamed for her past hurts. Well, it may not be fair, but that's just the way trauma operates inside of you. What he doesn't realize is that you don't want to have your trauma triggered. You are not looking for an excuse to be sad or to be angry or to be distant. Trauma triggers come unbidden and they stay with you until you've healed from your trauma. At this point, I think it would be helpful for you to begin identifying your trauma triggers. As you look at the trauma triggers worksheet, you'll notice that there are categories for various things that may trigger your trauma. Spend a few minutes trying to list as many of the trauma triggers as you can for each of these categories. Don't worry about the right hand column right now. Just concentrate on listing your trauma triggers in the left hand column. Pause the video right now and complete this portion of the trauma triggers worksheet. 
you may be feeling rather tense now. In fact, this exercise may have reawakened some hurts that you had long since forgotten about. Well, do this with me. I'd like you to, to close your eyes and, and just take a deep breath. Now let it out. And do it again, another deep breath and slowly let it out. And as you work through this exercise, you may find that you need to do this again and again to just relax yourself a bit. Well, now we're going to complete the other half of the worksheet. Look at the right-hand column. What kind of plan could you come up with when you're faced with a trauma trigger? What's one thing you can do when you encounter one of these people, one of these places, one of these things, events, or behaviors that trigger your trauma? One thing you can do is to stop and take slow cleansing breaths like we did a moment ago. What's something else that you could do when you're faced with a trauma trigger? Well, if the trauma that is triggered involves a place, then you might just choose to avoid the place. However, for many, this is really not a viable option uh, for, you know, that might mean you avoid your home or your city or maybe even a particular state. Maybe a better way of dealing with trauma triggers that concern places would be to take a friend with you as you go back to these places for the first few times then you can talk to your friend uh, about what you're feeling there. Oh, there's a number of other ways to deal with trauma triggers like uh, using prayer or meditation, saying affirmations, calling a friend that's supportive of you, uh, journaling about your feelings. All of these are ways that you can deal with trauma triggers. Well, pause the video now and complete the right-hand column of this worksheet. See if you can come up with at least one thing you can do each time you encounter one of the triggers on your list. Now that you've completed your trauma triggers worksheet, you have the first item for your partner survival kit. Now the rest of the items in the survival kit are up to you. Basically what you want to do is to include items that will be helpful to you when you encounter a difficulty in dealing with trauma. Um, the second thing to put in your kit uh, would be a journal. As you write daily about your experiences, you can look back and see the progress you've made in the preceding weeks. And you can see how you've handled those difficult times in the past. And then repeat what you've done that you found that works. Now there's two books that should be a part of your kit. You'll want to include our textbook, Stop Sex Addiction, and also the book, Your Sexually Addicted Spouse, How Partners Can Cope and Heal. This book is one of the best resources I know of for helping partners of sex addicts heal from their trauma. Then you'll want to also include phone numbers of those that you turn to for support. This uh, list can include close friends and maybe the names of people that you've gotten to know in 12-step meetings. Maybe you'll have on there uh, the number of your therapist. Some people want to include uh, the, uh, the name and number of their pastor, priest, or rabbi. Or maybe there's some other spiritual advisor that you'd like to include. Include a copy of the schedule for your 12-step meetings and make sure you have a listing not only of the meetings that you typically attend, but also of meetings that are on other days and at other times in case you feel like you need to get the additional support of a meeting. Uh, you can always go to your list and say, you know, this would be a good time to go to a meeting and you'll have a place to go. You may want to include something uh, that is for giving yourself a bit of pampering. For example, you might include a gift card for a facial or a manicure um, 
or maybe it would be a, a gift card for your favorite coffee shop so you can stop in and get a cappuccino when you want. Add to your kit the list of affirmations you created in week 13. And as you're putting this list in your kit, see if there's additional affirmations that you can come up with right now. You know, something else you might want to do is to include a, a, a photograph of yourself. If there's a particular photo that you like above others, put that in your kit. Finally, you may want to include a book of scripture uh, as well as a devotional or a meditation book. And when you've gathered all of these items in your kit, then you need to determine what kind of container that you'll need to keep your kit. And you'll also uh, need to determine where you're going to store that kit. I would suggest that you assemble this kit today and have it available for the next time that you find yourself struggling with a trauma trigger. Now it's time for your assignment. Read chapter 13 in Stop Sex Addiction. Complete the worksheet for this lesson if you haven't already done so. Journal about your recovery every day. Do something good for yourself this week. Then each day begin and end your day with your recovery prayers. Well now, let's end this lesson with the evening prayer for recovery. Dear God, thank you for a day of healing today. Help me to continue healing tomorrow. And I'll see you back here again next week.